Jeremy Cook here. And today I've got something that I'm really excited to show off. It's a macro keyboard slash rotary encoder control that I'm calling the JC Pro Macro. JC for my name, Jeremy Cook, and then the Pro Macro is named after the Pro Micro board that's used to control it. This uses an AT Mega 32U4 microcontroller that interfaces with the computer as a USB. And you can see here, you can turn up the volume up and down with that. And then when you press this, it moves the mouse back and forth to keep your computer active, to keep it on and make it think that you're there at the terminal. The keys are set up so they can, they can fast forward or rewind songs or play, pause things in Spotify or any other media app. The two top buttons can help you tab through browser tabs, but they can be set up to anything you want. You've got a little display on the top that I use for troubleshooting. It looks pretty awesome. It's optional, but I thought it was pretty great to have there. The PCB is designed in KiCad, which uh, I really like. It's a great program and has all kinds of interesting capabilities. All the keys are pulled to input pull up so that when you press it, it goes to ground and you can see a 3D model of it here. Got some WS2812B LEDs and the rotary encoder, of course, and the Pro Micro board, which controls everything. This project was sponsored by PCBWay and they've done really excellent work for me in the past. In this case, I ordered my board with a black solder mask, and I gotta be honest, that looks really spectacular when it gets back. It's, it does cost a little bit more to order it, but the results are really excellent if you wanna show off your board to other people, which I certainly do. So I got that back in about a week and opened it up, and let's see what it looks like. It does indeed look really good and it fits my keyboard, my keys, so that's good too. Always a little bit of a doubt whether your footprints and everything are gonna line up. So got the Pro Micro board, the encoder and everything else, and it looks like everything's gonna work okay. Soldered the WS2812B LEDs on here. Tried to hand solder them, which I was somewhat successful with, but I gotta be honest, this isn't the best way to do it if you've got another option. I did actually have another option, which I made a laser cut solder stencil. So I'll go over that a little bit later in the video. So stay tuned for that. Other thing I needed to solder up was this Pro Micro board. So obviously you gotta stick it on the Pro Macro board. Solder that all in here, looking good. It's a JC Pro Macro keyboard designed July, 2021. Everything's just flowing in nicely. Got one of the keys there. And there's the encoder, stuck it on. Looking good, looking good there. That, however, could be a problem. Whether or not it was electrically secure, at least mechanically, it looked pretty good. The keyboard worked, push button on the encoder worked, and I added an aluminum rotary knob on it, which really, really looks good, I think. Now about that misconnection. So I was having some real trouble getting the encoder button to work. I just couldn't get this to work even though I traced everything out. But if you see on the back side, I finally, it took me so long to notice this is not really soldered. So I'll check, I'll, I'll correct that and it should work. I kind of tested it by, t by pushing the lead over and it seemed to work. Seriously, those took, took me way longer than it should have to recognize this. But I guess live and learn, right? And after a bit of hacking, look at that. Goes to zero and goes to zero on that. And turn it down, down, up, 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 up. Very cool. So looks like this thing's more or less working. I'll just have to set the rest of it up. Yeah, set the rest of it up. That's something people say, and then it takes a lot more work, I guess. This rendering does look pretty good, though, I, I think. And the KiCad has some really good good 3D capabilities if you haven't played with it. You can even export STP files, which Fusion 360 or any other CAD program can, can work with. So here I used that, I exported it, and then used the base of the PCB to make the base of this that I cut out of acrylic. So there's the base, nice in, uh, in Fusion 360. There is the face kind of kind of pulled out off of it into a into a drawing into a sketch. Obviously there's gonna be some modification to get everything just how you want it. And honestly, I was kind of fumbling my way through it because this is the first time I've tried to work with something like exactly like this. But it, it does really nice. And, and when you get done with it, if you've got all your 
everything correct, it's all going to be in the right place. You don't have to worry about whether you measured it correctly or not. So you save that to a DXF when you get it how you want it, import it to Lightburn, and then from there, Laser just makes it for you. It's a really awesome tool to have. With that done, I try to tap the, the holes. Use a three millimeter tap, or, or what I thought was a three millimeter tap, but the standoffs, which are three each three millimeters, for some reason, whoop, and I dropped that there. But anyway, for some reason, the three millimeter standoffs did not screw in here correctly. So it's more of a press fit at this point. I did use a hand drill for this because I thought, well, it's just a whole lot faster. Even though I'm a little paranoid about breaking taps off, nothing happened here. So maybe I'll start using this a little bit more in the future. While this keyboard does work, there's definitely a few more experiments that I want to try with it. I'm planning to do at least one more video on the subject, so be sure to subscribe to see what comes next. I'll also be selling these boards, so check out the description to see where you can find them, as well as some more information on the build. As alluded to earlier, I did make a laser cut solder stencil for this PCB. Obviously, you could probably just order it from uh, PCB Way or whoever else you're, you're using, but in this case on KiCad, I, I drew out the outline on the solder paste layer so that when I exported this, I'd have a nice outer layer that I could line up with the board and all the WS2812 LB LEDs lined up so I could just put the solder paste on, heat it up, and then be done with it. Or so I thought. I loaded it up into Lightburn and had to burn out the holes with the fill mode. Per a suggestion, I used a transparency sheet, which seems to work much better than the business cards which I'd used in an earlier project. So line that up, and then a little solder paste, a little more, more and more, and eventually got it all nice and nice and pasted. There's the WS2012B LEDs, and at that point it was time for the hot air gun. The mat that I had it on actually ended up heating up, so you could see it rising just a little bit as the as it gets hotter and hotter. If you've got the setup, it's definitely much easier than hand soldering it, at least for me. Cooled off a little bit, and then it was time to try it out. Looking good. Look at those LEDs just blinking every color of the rainbow. And there is the finished part beside it. The little screen, of course, is optional, so this provides a different, different way of user interface, if you so desire. As far as the keys, I ordered some of these, but before I got them, I actually plucked them off of a unused keyboard that I had. A little unsoldering, a little work with tweezers, and yeah, you're good to go. I mean, if that's the way you want to do it, it's, it's not a bad way to do it. I would just make sure you've got all the WS2812B LEDs plugged in beforehand. Because modifying after that fact is a bit of a pain. Ask me in the comments how I know. It's also a bit, little bit difficult to keep the keys in place and everything else, but I do have a bit of a solution for that that I hopefully can go over in the second video. So please do subscribe or check back to see what happens with that. The keys are soldered in and nice and secure and after a bit of twisting, everything looked good. Of course, I needed some keycaps and those came from the, the keyboard as well. Just pop them off and pop them back on. The keyboard, of course, is programmed using the Arduino IDE. I won't go into this too too heavily because the code's up on GitHub if you want to check it out, but basically I defined all the variables, used input pull-up so I didn't have to use a, a pull-up resistor. Although I do have optional pull-ups for the I2C pins that go to the screen. The code's largely broken up into functions to make things more readable and to make it just more manageable for me to write. In the end though, if you want to get your hands on it, I've got this on GitHub so you can look at it more and make it do just about anything you want. I've got it set up for media control here, but there's really no reason you couldn't have it do anything, any sort of program you wanted to control in a custom way, say Final Cut Pro or maybe maybe Word, maybe you want it to type in a certain certain sentence when you press press a button. Anything you want like that can pretty much be done with this. Of course, I think the coolest feature is, is the rotary encoder, just being able to turn it up and down depending on if you want to do volume or, or anything else you can really think of. It's a really, really nice tactile feedback. Right here, I've got the LEDs set up so that when you twist it, 
it rotates with it. And then when you press the button, it gives it some lights to indicate that it's in the, the jiggler mode, which keeps the computer on and keeps it active. Of course, this is really useful how it is. I'm really happy with how it turned out, but there's just so many more improvements that I can do to it. I'm, I'm really looking forward to delving into this more. So I hope you'll check back to see how it develops. And until then, you can check out my channel. I've got all kinds of projects like, like Strand Beast, for example, and other PCB projects that you may enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy Cook, signing off.